Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I came across something I never knew before. I always thought that it was just one person that was taken up to heaven alive. Did you know there were two? Besides Jesus. There was another person that was taken up there. I didn't realize this. It was, I was wanting to look up something about Elijah because he was taken up in the whirlwind. And it's just like, who's this other guy? Enoch. Back in the Old Testament time. According to the Bible, Enoch and Elijah are the only two people God took up into heaven without dying. And Genesis 5.24 tells us, Enoch walked with God, then he was no more, because God took him away. And in 2 Kings 2.11 tells us, Suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Enoch was described as a man who walked with God for over 300 years. Elijah was perhaps the most powerful of God's prophets in the Old Testament. So it is interesting that Elijah was one of them chosen along with Moses to be with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. It certainly had to be a frightening experience for the disciples that were there, Peter, James, and John. To all of a sudden see Moses and Elijah there with Jesus. A young woman asked her older co-worker, why do you go to church every Sunday? Does something happen there that doesn't happen anywhere else? Does it happen every Sunday, she asked. That's an interesting question. Why do we go to church every Sunday? Well, the older woman replied, What happens is I go to meet God whom I've come to know in Jesus. God meets me in other settings at church. However, I must confess, she says, that I'm sure that I miss out on most, God's, most of God's appointments. And I find I live most of my life, my life in a daze. As though I'm sleepwalking, she says. I go to church to re be reminded that's true. That Jesus is for real. Well, then the younger woman asks, So you go to church every week and God meets you there. And the older woman replies, I go to church every Sunday for reasons I can't explain. I meet God about one in every eight Sundays. Then the younger woman says, well, then why do you go every Sunday? And the lady says, I go every Sunday because I never know which Sunday it's going to be. So if you meet God once every eight Sundays... You don't want to miss out on that Sunday because that could be the Sunday a revelation comes to you. You might learn something. Even from me, you might learn something. You never know. But what's more important is that this is a place and time when we can basically shield ourselves from the outside world and be concentrating on God. Not be worried about everything else that's going on out there. It's a transfiguration time for us, you could say. A time when we transfigure our lives into being with God, in God's presence, with Him each and every day. To basically cure us of our blindness. It's interesting to note that when, uh, when they went up to the mountain, before Jesus went up to the mountain, He healed somebody that was blind. And when he came back out of the mountain, he also healed somebody that was blind. Maybe there's a correlation there. A correlation that we're blind to some of the facts about Jesus. That we're blind because we're so consumed with the things around this world. Even Peter, before they went up in the mountain, Peter declared that you are the Messiah. And Jesus basically rebuked him, though. Because, see, Peter was blind. 
Peter had this vision of Jesus coming in and restoring order and getting rid of the Roman Empire and Jesus was going to be king. And you know that's not what Jesus had in mind. Because see, Jesus was going to suffer. He was going to be rejected by the religious leaders and he was going to die. And Peter says, no, 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 that's not going to happen. You know what Jesus said after that. Get behind me, Satan. To follow Jesus is simply voluntary, but we have to be opening up our vision. Sometimes we walk around with blinders on, so we don't see the whole picture, but a small picture about Jesus. When Peter, James, and John were up on the mountain, Jesus was whiter than white. I can't imagine what that's like, but it must be a glorious white. You can imagine them looking and all of a sudden they they see Jesus talking to Elijah and Moses. They must have had a sense of terror. Peter's even, Peter's all beside himself. He doesn't know what to say. We'll build three houses for you, three tents. We'll do something here for you guys. Peter was just not sure what was going on. And sometimes we as humans want to put God in a box. We want God to do the things for us. We want God to follow our way of life instead of us releasing the power of God out of that box that we can live a godly life. So we must hear the voice of God. When you're blind, one of your your senses pick up are more sensitive, so actually your hearing gets better. So when you're blind, your hearing gets better and you can listen better. But it's better to see and to hear than just to hear. Jesus did all this for us out of love. It's a community of glory. It's a community of faith. It's about not being terrified. It's not about being terrified of the end. It's about releasing ourselves to God in God's control. Basically, we may control the steering wheel, but let God control the wheels. That may seem kind of strange, but what happens if something happens to your steering wheel and you no longer have control of your vehicle? It happened to my advertising lady one time. She was coming into Groton. She's got control of the steering wheel. All of a sudden, something breaks underneath. And she's got no control of the car. Ends up in an accident. So when I say, we may control the steering wheel, but let God control the wheels, that's what we really need to do. We're not in control of our lives. Let God be in control of our lives. But sometimes we think, it's my way or no way. It's going to be done this way and this way. And forget about any other way. Let God do the driving. Let God be in control. Sometimes we think, well, you know, it'd be kind of cool if we could recreate some of these things and and, uh, the same thing would happen again. You know, sometimes we see an event happen and say, oh, that's awesome. I wonder if we could recreate it again because we want the same emotion. Well, usually it doesn't happen. If we get all excited about an event, it's a one-time event. You cannot recreate something that happens once. God doesn't do command performances. God just wants our love. He wants our hearts. He wants our obedience. The story of the transfiguration tells us about true worship and how it occurs. The voice of God comes down and says, Listen to him. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Worship isn't about one hour a week, one day a week. Worship in God is about every day of the week, about every breath that we take. And I know in this world that we live in, it's difficult to do that because We're surrounded by all these things. But you know, if you think about it, 
even in your subconscious mind, if you are well tuned to God, you are worshiping Him and giving Him glory and praising Him, even in your mind. And you may not even realize it. That only happens, though, through continuous exercise of your mind, through continuous prayer, through continuous worship. That might happen maybe on that one in every eight Sundays. But you might be really happy when that eighth Sunday comes. Yes, this is the day. I'm glad I came today. The other seven Sundays are thinking, I wonder why I'm here. <laughs> We're here because God is always here on our side. He's always listening to us, and we should be listening for him. Let him do the driving. Peter, James, and John, you know, they were excited in a way that, hey, we're glad we're here. And just like we say, we're glad that we're in church. But even though Jesus healed somebody that was blind beforehand and afterwards and the disciples went up, they were also still blind coming down because they were discussing rising from the dead. They still didn't have a clue. Here they are with Jesus, the Son of God. He's telling them everything, and they still don't get at the fact that he has to die. And they're discussing, what is rising from the dead? What does that mean? They seen Moses. Moses had died. I could see that maybe they were perplexed about Elijah being there, but Moses had died. And he was there. And they still didn't get it. Rising from the dead. Maybe they thought their beloved leader was going to be with them forever. Jesus was only in his 30s when he died. He was young. But he had to do that for us. He had to do it in his prime because as, when he had, as a physical being have the strength to carry the cross. The cross for us. The cross that will endure our sins and have everlasting life and forgiveness. The Transfiguration Sunday is hopefully a sun, Sunday that transfigures our lives into something more spectacular, into something more wonderful, into something that's glorifying God each and every day. Give praise to God because He deserves the praise. Give glory to God because He deserves the glory. Don't be afraid when you go out and eat to pray for your meal. You see that sometimes, and it's nice to see other people do it, but most people don't. It's not proper to pray in public, as some may say. <coughs> I disagree. Praying is something that you should do in public at certain circumstances, but you don't want to overdo it. We don't want to be like the publican who's out there banging his chest and giving praise and, and so forth to God. And, and Jesus is saying, that's the wrong type of person. I mean, point to somebody else who's in the corner over there praising him. That's the one he points to. That's the example that he sets for us. So we shouldn't make a spectacle of ourselves when we're out praying in public, but we can still pray in silence and pray within our little atmosphere or universe that we're in. That's where the transfiguration is going to happen. Because we will meet, what we may do in private will be glorified forever up in heaven. And then we will be rewarded. God loves us. He loves each one of us dearly. We are his children. So let's remember him all eight Sundays. Every Sunday. Every day. Remember him. Because he remembered us. Amen.